I'm really just running for money. I'm low flow, Joe chasing a check. I'm really gonna run up the money. I'm Carl Lewis, really running the best. Calm moving through these hoovers, I maneuver with the bag, baby. Never feel a stress. Calm moving through these hoovers, I maneuver with the bag, baby. Never feel a stress. I'm really just running for money. I'm low flow, Joe chasing a check. I'm really gonna run up the money. I'm Carl Lewis, really running the best. Calm moving through these hoovers, I maneuver with the bag. Welcome in, everybody. It's the coach, and you're tuned in to Madden 19 on EA Sports. Straight ahead, we've got a good one in store between the Austin Armadillos and the Portland River Hogs. I'll have scores around the league for you at the half, but it's time for a little football. So we'll hand it over to our broadcast team, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, EA Sports coverage of the National Football League is on the air. Nothing like the fanfare of introductions to an NFL game, and that was in evidence a moment ago. Fireworks, pyrotechnics, you name it, this crowd is ready as their guys get set to match up between the Austin Armadillos and the Portland River Hogs. Along with Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. And, Charles, we look at this Portland team entering play. The losers their last time out, so they'll look to make amends here. And one of the best ways you can do that is to be at home, and they are. They're going to try and ride that home crowd and that wave of emotion to a victory in this one. Meanwhile, for our visiting Austin Ball Club, they were winners last time out, so they'll be looking, Charles, to make it two in a row. And what I enjoyed when I watched their game tape and their victory last week they put it together in every phase. Good offense, good defense, and some key plays on special teams. Let's see if they can get that second win in a row. Fielded about a yard deep. And the decision to bring it out, a good one, as he's up a yard or two shy of the 30. So out comes this offense to take over for the first time. And a glance here at their quarterback standing six foot three. And I liked what his head coach told us about him this week, that no matter what happens, he, whether he throws seven interceptions or seven touchdown passes, he's the same assertive leader in the huddle on each and every play. He can throw the seven interceptions, just blame the football, blame anything else, and still carry himself like he is the man. It's like you, assertive in our production meetings. Well, especially when we're talking, talking about ordering dinner, ordering some snacks. I was snacks. just going to say. That's, that's where I go. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. Now let's go! They'll run it now out of the gun. And he stopped immediately there. No gain on the play, and now they're faced with a third and one. And the big boys up front in the trenches. What do you think of the O-line, Charles? I love them because this is a group that's so cohesive. They know what the man next to them is going to do at all times, and they operate as a terrific unit. They just play number three here on the opening drive, and it's an early third and one. Hey, uh, here we go. Looking to throw. Throwing the slant pattern here complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. His first catch, good for 16 and a first. I don't care who you put on him, he's going to be a handful in one-on-one -on -one throws. Yeah, right now, you're right. They're in man-to-man. -man. Maybe need some safety help. I would say that'd be a good idea. Double teaming. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. Well, competition comes up in so many different ways, and right now, this unit, their competition is who's going to get to the quarterback the most times. Had about five sacks last week. We just saw their first one of this game. A 
The job becomes twice as difficult now. After the sack, it's second and 20. They'll look to throw. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. A nice pick up there, 19 yards. And they're set up better for third. And he's already got two catches on the opening drive. <laughs> they know he's going to be a handful. And sometimes you game plan for that offensively. You want to make sure that guy touches the ball. And sometimes it just happens naturally. And then you change your game plan. When he has the hot hand, you keep going back to him because he's running routes with confidence as the game goes on. This is third and one. Very likely four down territory, even if they don't get it, though. Here we go now. And they'll let their fullback try and push the pile. They're just four yards on the pickup, but that's good enough to extend the drive. What? Who are you going to call? Not the scat back. You go with the big man. Hand him the ball and let him get upfield and pick up a first down. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Now let's go. Green three. They go play action here on first down. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. And does the defense have it? They do, says the referee. We're going the other way. Often on fumbles, you look at the guy who coughed it up and say, geez, what did he do? But, hey, let's tip the cap to the defense here. Not a problem at all, my man. I'm not going to tip it. I'm going to doff my cap to him. Congratulations. Big time play. Knocking it free and creating something good for your team. Out comes this offensive unit as they get set to take over here. They've got good starting field position as they come up here first and ten. Set, three, four, five. Wade will throw it this time. And they didn't wait long to take a shot there, that's for sure, but it falls incomplete. And it's second down. Well, that certainly looked like something that they discussed all week in practice getting ready for this one. Take the big shot right out of the gate. At worst, you'll open up the defense a little bit, loosen them up, have them back on their heels. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. That throw good for only a couple. It brings up third down. I think defensively, you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on. And I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that and you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch, now you put the offense in a position where every series they have to work hard to pick up first downs and you tend to stall them out when you do that. North of 100 yards, the two scores. and You know, you got to give a lot of credit to the O-line. We talked a lot about him, but offensive line was good, too. They're obviously in sync with each other, whether it's zone blocking, power running game, no matter what, he understands how to read them and find the creases that they provide. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, this big defensive lineman will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. First catch for him on the afternoon, and it results in a first down. Pretty solid start for the rookie here on this first drive, Charles. Able to have some confidence, step it back into the pocket, move around a little bit, find open receivers, and deliver. That just means his confidence is going to continue to grow because he's getting more and more comfortable with each completed pass. This will be their first trip to the red zone. They've got it first and goal to go. Wade in the gun. This will be caught at about the six. Nice job defensively to hold him to four, and now it's second and goal. Well, they're unable to convert that into much, but it's never a bad idea to try to get the ball into a tight end of his caliber's hands and see what kind of disruption he can cause. Looking to throw. Wade, and it's caught. Touchdown. As his guys are in for six, and his guys have taken a first quarter lead. And all about timing there on that short slant, Charles. Exactly right. That was timed up so well. The route, the throw, touchdown. Point after here coming up. 
The extra point splits the uprights, and that makes the score 7-0. Setting now to kick this one away, and off it goes. Fielded about a yard deep. And the decision to bring it out, a good one, as he's up a yard or two shy of the 30. Now this offense ready to head back out there. And last time, not only the turnover, but that turned into six points. They got to make up for that here. We always hear about empty possessions, but some are worse than others. You can have an empty possession, pump the ball away, get yourself set to play defense, but when you turn it over, it changes momentum, and when they take it downfield and punch it in on you, that's a bad possession all the way around. Yeah, but you're hungry to get back out there, aren't you? You better be, because otherwise, it's going to be a long day for you. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. A look there at the starters on the defensive side of the ball. They were terrific a week ago in the win over the Lions. Have to admit, I was extremely impressed by what I saw. They ended up getting four sacks in the game, stayed in the face of the quarterback the entire time, made it difficult for him to step up and find receivers downfield. And that's what they told us this week, that pressure on the QB is key. Now let's go! 319! Off the play fake, he'll look to throw. Finding his safety valve here, that's complete. And I think the ball's out, and this is picked up by the defense. And the return will be stopped at the 34-yard line. Whenever I see a team turn it over on back-to-back -back drives, fumbles on their last two, I know one person's blood pressure who is starting to rise, and that's the head coach. Absolutely. And when's it going to go down? When they stop fumbling? <laughs> <laughs> when they stop fumbling and after he's assessed the game film, and only if they manage to win the game. And now back out comes the offense. It's a quick turnaround for them after the turnover, but the way they moved it on their last drive, they're probably eager to get right back at it. And you know me, and you know my tendencies in this situation. What do I want right now? Be aggressive. Be aggressive. Take your shot right here. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Set, and on the ground they go with a running back. <laughs> and he's going to get this down near the 20-yard line. They give him 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. He was solid last week, over 100 yards in their victory on the ground. They want to get that going again. Absolutely. What they also understand is that from week to week, it's not necessarily the same, but they want it to be, right? What they saw last week on the ground, they want to see in this game as well. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent game. And they'll go with a ground attack here. And he'll get four there, down to about the 12-yard line. And that's one of the reasons you like to blitz even on rundowns. It confuses the blocking assignments. It doesn't allow those offensive linemen to get up to the second level. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. And they'll go on the ground. And he's able to pick up the first down before he's tackled right at the 10. They only got two, but that was enough as they'll convert to make it first and goal. We all love to have a home run hitter in the backfield. Guy can take it the distance, but in short yardage, trying to pick up first downs, that big guy, oh, he's a nice luxury to have, isn't he? try and run for it on first and goal. And he'll fight his way down inside the 10 to the 9-yard line. Give him two yards on that one. Second and goal now. This drive is pretty clear. Almost feels like old-school fundamentals, doesn't it? Want to impose their will on the defense. Was that five straight runs? Yeah, five straight carries to start this drive. And like you said, the way it's working, they may just stick with it. Seven big yards on the carry there to get him within range of the goal line with third down upcoming. They'll run it now out of the gun. And 
this one will wind up with him losing yardage. Back to the four-yard line. And a loss of three to bring up four. That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense, countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft and able to really make a big-time play for their defense. Now on fourth down, out comes the field goal unit here. This will be just a 21-yard attempt. And the 10-year vet knocks it through the goalpost, and that will make it 10-0 here in the first. A good drive gets him inside the five, but they could not punch it in. And credit the defense, too. Make sure that that happens because that was the old bend but don't break approach. Made sure they contained them when they absolutely had to and forced the field goal attempt that went through. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. Getting set to go again as we look at the back, heading onto the field again. He's got to clear his mind a little bit right now. One carry, and that carry was a lost fumble. Clear his mind, clear his hands, and, this, and just let this one go. Sometimes it happens. You drop the ball, got a full game ahead of him, hand it to him again, see if they can start to produce. Now they'll run it on the toss. Space to maneuver at the 40. As they finally wrangle him in at the 48. An ideal beginning of the drive there as they'll get 20 at a first down. I have to admit, I'm excited by that play call and the end result because this is a team that's down big early in the first quarter, and a lot of teams will just panic, abandon the playbook, and just start firing the ball all over the place. It's way too early for that. Stick to what works for you. Down double digits, and we talked about their game plan being both running and passing there. You're right. They're sticking to the game plan, getting the ground game going. A lot of football left to be played. And seeing no options, he just tosses this one away incomplete. Now that'll bring up second down. What's the old adage, be quick but don't hurry? Well, that went right out the window there. He was hurried, harassed. <laughs> that ball had to be gotten rid of, otherwise he was going to get sacked. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Set. Green, 39! Green, 39! They'll set up to throw. Throws right side, and that's complete. He was locked in. Two trips to the end zone, Charles, over 100 yards receiving. How about the combination of route running, confidence going downfield, and the ability to go up and get the football? You're exactly right. It was hard for them to stop him. There's a completion to the tight end, and I think that we're looking at something out of central casting, frankly. Absolutely. I mean, size, the hands. Speed. I mean, can flat out run. You put that whole package together, you light up the eyes of an offensive coordinator, don't you? Well, we saw him there trying to get it to the outside, trying to get to the perimeter, but not a whole lot of room there. But there's got to be one positive to that. If you keep moving laterally, creases tend to develop as the game moves on, and they can run it back inside later. The NFL on EA Sports is presented by Snickers. You're not you when you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. Back with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. Portland in control of the football here to begin quarter number two. They've got a second and nine to start things out. Hey, now let's go. Blue, They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's going to get this one down to the 30. Back-to-back one-yard runs here, so that leaves him with a third down and eight. Brandon, we talk all the time about those hybrid players, guys who can do more than one thing, and I think if you're playing strong safety in the NFL today, you are a true hybrid. Part linebacker, part cover guy. And coming up, sticking his nose in the mess there and making a nice play defensively. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. And his kick is indeed good. And they get themselves on the board here. It's 10 to 3. So they do get three points, but that's now three drives with only the three points, not a ratio that's going to win you many ball games. Not at all, Brandon. And think about it this way. We all know payoff is the key, right? And wouldn't we love to have the concession on every T-shirt that's been printed in football that says finish on it? Because that's the mantra everywhere. Got to be able to finish drives, put points on the board.
So out now comes the offense back onto the field. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three-point the kicker. Exactly. <laughs> you put it through the post, that's going to help him at contract time. But that offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that helped him at contract time. You, you could have kicked that one through. I don't know about that. Toe bash. I don't know about that. Toe bash. <laughs> Super toe. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. Looking to throw on second down. Wade firing quickly here, and that's complete. And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. Third catch of this first half for him, and this one is a first down. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to, pick up a first down. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Set, three, Throwing on first down, Wayne. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. That's very well timed there defensively because it's not a bad throw, but the collision came at the exact time he was reaching to bring in the football. Really, really well done. Decent offense, just better defense. I think you're right. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Catch number four for him on the afternoon, and it'll give him a first down. A lot of tight ends just use their size and their strength, try to occupy some space and kind of body people away and catch the football. But not this guy. He's a refined route runner. Makes me wonder if he took some dance classes in his background with his footwork. So on the other side of the field now, it's first and 10. As they've got things rolling on this drive. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. But we just saw a great example of what we talked about with his coach prior to the game. He's definitely one of the better linebackers of reading a play and flowing to make the stop before it turns into something big. Set. To throw on second down, Wade. And eventually taken down here. Great coverage downfield. You never want to give up a sack. And from the O-line's perspective, they hate it for several reasons, especially because they felt like they let little brother down back there in the pocket. Oh, no doubt. They have a ton of pride, and they go into every job wanting to keep that guy clean. They want that uniform with no grass stains, no dirt, nothing on it. But it's really, really difficult. You're talking about some terrific athletes who are trying to put him on the ground. Need something from deep in the bag of tricks here after first and second down went backwards. It's third and very long. Set, blue 58. Operating from the gun, Wayne. And he's going to go down again. And we say it all the time, have to be able to get rid of the ball sooner than that. You have to help your offensive line out. They're going to protect you as best they can. And if you get three to five seconds to throw the ball, they're doing a really nice job. But when you hold it and give up a sack, you're really almost discrediting their work. And on now is the punter, as he's on to punt for the first time this afternoon. So a change of possession here on the punt. And out will come the offense as they take over. Now this offense about ready to take over again. And last time able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just I, I like the way you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. At this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. 
early down stuff to so put this uh, offense in a precarious Three, position. Lucky. We know that securing the point of attack, especially against the big-bodied guys in the middle of this D, has got to be priority one. Over the middle, it's complete. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. His first catch there, good for 10 yards and a first down. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Hurry up, here we go. Now a play fake here on first down. Wide open receiver complete. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Set, three, 19. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. He's got his man on the crossing route. Uh, he's got this to the 30 before being taken down. 23 yards on the play. So on that play, defense was in the zone. They ran a crossing route offensively, but the defense there, you got to be good with communication, don't you? You certainly do, and it's not something that is really evident when you watch it on the screen, but everyone's talking, communicating, pointing, and it keeps you from chasing receivers because you have a specific zone you have to cover. When a receiver's in your zone and he crosses to another one, you got to let your guy know hey, go. they got a completion Three, there, but I like the discipline they show to stay in their proper areas and then make the tackle. Looking downfield, and that's caught right side. He's got his man. Another nice gain, 16 yards there and a first down again. But it appears that they read man defense and went to the out route. And what you have to do on that one is the receiver's got to make sure he works a defender towards the middle of the field to give himself space to cut to the outside and have that ball delivered with good timing. And they got it done. This will be their first trip to the red zone. It's first and 10 at the 14. Inside the red zone here. They'll look to throw. And it's caught. Touchdown in for the score and his guys are an extra point away from tying this thing up the catch and the touchdown they were the end result of a terrific route run by the receiver And a pause in the action because the booth, they see something that they want to take another peek at to find out if this was a touchdown or not. They had to go to the monitor, get an extra look. That's what the technology is for, and this touchdown will count. Extra point right down the middle, and we are even at 10 apiece. So the drive there took six plays. So we're right back where we started. All even as the kick's away. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll make it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. And here now the offense heading back out there. They punted last time they had it. What steps, Charles, do you think they have to take to make sure they don't do that again? Well, let's just go to the football 101, the trade expression 101. Win first down. Make five, six, seven yards on first down and make it a second and three, second and manageable. Keep accumulating first downs that way. Keep moving the football. You don't want to get behind the sticks because then the defense has the advantage. First play of the drive going for 14 and a first down. 
Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. I think if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. Set three, 61. Right back to him on first down. And he's across the 43, extra yards to the 43. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. Set, three, 45. Looking to throw on second down. Wade, looking right sideline, but it's incomplete. You've always been very good about checking my math. Am I correct? That's the first time that it's been incomplete when they've thrown it to him? Yes, he had caught every other ball coming his way. So they feel like they've got something really good going there, and they're going to continue to go there until the defense makes an adjustment and takes it away. Well, they finally made an adjustment there. We'll see if they can build on that stop. From the gun on third down, Wade. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? The zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Third down, you got to try and find something. There's nothing available there for him. And great special teams work here. This is knocking on the door of the five. They'll spot it at the six-yard line. Now this offensive unit ready to see what they can do here. The last possession, these guys were able to tie the game with a touchdown, and now they'll have a chance to move out in front. Yeah, let's give a big assist to the defense who got the ball back. The special teams went out there, handled things. They've got it. They've got momentum. I know they're eager to get out there and put it on display. And they'll try the ground game here with the running back. And he'll take this one up to about the 13. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking, but the guy carrying the ball, he was the finisher. A really nice run. Hey, up. Here we go. Blue lining. They'll drop to throw. He's going to flip that out to the flat. It's complete. Now a loose football, the ball comes out, but fortunately another offensive player quick to react and they will indeed retain possession. Wow, that ball gets knocked free, but a teammate comes along and scoops it up. Almost like, it's almost like baseball. Guys at bat, people are on base in scoring position, one guy doesn't get them home, the next guy comes through and picks him up. And avoids the turnover. And they'll run it here. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. He may be a bit undersized compared to the modern-day NFL defensive tackle, but what he lacks in size, he definitely makes up for in his ability to make tackles in the run game as well. Now let's go! 319! 319! They'll run it now out of the gun. And he loses the football a second time. Skill, whatever the case is, they're feeling good about just keeping the football there. Yeah, the biggest thing that they're calling it now, our ball. <laughs> I mean, they don't care if it was luck or skill. Boy, the panic that jumps up in your chest when that ball's on the ground, whether you get it or your teammate gets it, just as long as you retain possession, that's all you're looking for. Hurry up, here we go. Out of the gun now on third down. Toward the sideline, and he will have the first down as he was able to keep the feet in bounds. It's a seven-yard gain there, and it's good enough to move the chains. And that's how you pick up a first down. Not only does he make the catch, but has enough body control to get his feet down in bounds, toe-tapping and dragging to make sure he gets it done. So first and 10 now from the 30. Two minutes to play in a tightly contested first half. Back to the booth right after this.
And we remind you, coming up at the half, we'll join who, Charles? The coach. <laughs> the coach, Jonathan Coachman, standing by in Orlando. He'll have stats and scores from games in progress, as well as scores from earlier today. The Sorry. coach. Sorry, we get slap happy up here sometimes. They're going to look to throw. And he's got his man on the out round. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. We'll give him 10 yards on that one, and that'll earn him a fresh set of downs. On first down, he'll drop to throw. And he just gets rid of it, throws it away. The lies move there, look like nobody open. Now second down. Something we haven't really seen much of from him, an incomplete pass. Yeah, last week he finished at 70%. This week he's up over 80%. I don't know how you slow him down. Pass rush is usually the best way because a quarterback on his back usually can't complete a pass. The play action fake. They'll look to throw. And he rifles one incomplete. They don't get the hook up there, but you really have to marvel at how precise he's been throwing the football these last couple weeks. Oh, that's a perfect word for it, precise, because if you're at 70% or better two weeks in a row, you have a job as long as you want one in this league, won't you? I mean, let's face it, it's not just West Coast offense either. Right, He's putting go. the ball downfield as well. Blue 90. They'll look to throw here. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. And play is stopped here. Timeout. It's the defense calling the timeout here. As they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. So a defensive timeout, chance to regather, regroup, and get set as we resume action. And a little too much mustard on that one. It hits a couple yards into the end zone. A missed opportunity there maybe to pin them back. Out comes this offensive unit as they get set to take over here. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there? And, not and he fires one that's intercepted. Picked off at the 21. And he'll be down at the six-yard line. And that pick just sets him up beautifully right down near the goal line. I remember being in a defensive meeting back when I was in college, and our defensive coordinator says, we're going to call this be who you are defense. D linemen, you play the run. Linebackers, be aware of anything. And secondary, you play the pass. That way, you're all set, ready for whatever they put out there. Now this offense ready to head back out there. They were forced to punt last time, and I doubt sincerely that they'll have to punt here because they're gifted with terrific field position. I don't even want to think about the idea that they would end up punting starting with this type of field position. Neither do they. Great starting spot, great opportunity to run your full playbook. They want to take a shot here, they can go ahead and do it. He'll look to throw, and it's caught. Touchdown! As his guys are in for six, and his guys are going to take the lead. But what a quick turnaround there. They get the football. Next play, boom, touchdown. I've been in a situation before where a turnover occurs. If you're over on the bench with your defensive mate, and you talk about what to do on your next series, and all of a sudden you hear sudden change, you've got to get out on the field and defend right away. Not everyone is mentally prepared to go. Is that what is yelled on the sidelines a lot of times? That, among other things. <laughs> Maybe some words we can't share here. Yeah, we'll, we'll just keep this one, PG. FCC violation. No doubt. Point after, right down the middle. And that makes it a 17-10 score. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. There again is the running back as he trots onto the field. He's been good. They've utilized him well, but they're losing here in the second quarter. What might they change offensively? I think that what you try and do is expand how you get the ball to him a little bit. Get him out in open space, maybe swing the ball to him. What's that they used to call it in the West Coast offense, the long handoff? Yeah. Serve as your running play that way, as well as continue to feed him the football. Some of these runs now may pop bigger later in the game because of the effects of running it. Sometimes people after a while, they don't want to tackle him anymore, or they get tired, or they get out of position, or he runs through tackles. 
continue to feed him the ball. He's having that kind of game. Yeah, might they get him the ball in some space in some different ways here. Line of scrimmage, again the 25, second and 10. Second and ten. Wade to throw it again. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And prior to this third and two play, we're going to get a timeout call. As he'll stop it with exactly a minute to go before halftime. On third and two, Wade. Throwing for his running back, and he's got him complete. Now the defense going to use the first of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. And now following that timeout, the defense back out onto the field. And they'll send out their punter now as he's on to kick it away. And this will be taken at the 13. A good return there, call it 13 yards. And possession will switch, hands first and 10. Now here's the signal caller, getting ready to lead this offense again. And he's been good, two first half touchdown passes, no interceptions so far. Does a lot for your confidence, does a great deal for your team, gives them a lead, and they're feeling really good about how they're playing. I think he expects to throw at least another one. I was going to say, now he wants the first half hat trick, doesn't he? Oh, without a doubt. Go ahead and fling him on the field, folks. He wants that type of celebration. Now the first play of the drive there is incomplete. It is tough to complete pass against zone defenses. The windows that you see open, they shrink pretty rapidly. How about being able to hit a moving target against a zone before the next guy can get there and make a play on the ball? Not easy for any quarterback, no matter the situation. And there, the defense won the battle. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and 10. He'll look to throw. And he comes back with one complete. Give him 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. Like so many tight ends nowadays, they have no problem at all putting him in the slot, letting him go to work, and that's a nice pitch and catch right there for a first down. This quarterback now closing in on a 200-yard first half through the air. It's first and 10. All right, here we go. He'll drop to throw. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Pressure can come from all over when you're plotting a defensive strategy. On that particular play, it just came from the outside. A growing theme in this first half. This is second and long. They'll throw now on the final play. Looking left side, it's complete. He's got it. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. So we have reached halftime with a touchdown. That's the difference on the scoreboard. As we'll send you eastward to Orlando, standing by with that EA Sports halftime report now is Jonathan Coachman. Take it away, Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. Time to give you folks at home a look around the NFL on this first official weekend of fall. So let's get to it. We'll begin up at Bank of America Stadium in Uptown Charlotte, where you see the final score there. 21-9, your final. We'll stay in the NFC South as we head over to the Big Easy. Check on the Saints at home at the Superdome. And you can see there, it's the visiting LA Rams who have the lead in that one. The Rams looking to grab that elusive first win of this campaign. Finally, we're off to Atlanta. Check on the Falcons at home at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. And that game is tied. They take on the visiting 49ers. Meanwhile, in our game, it's been a back-and-forth first half. Who can put it together in the second half? For the answer, we turn it back over to our broadcast team of Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. 
Okay, Coach, appreciate it. A one-touchdown game here as we get set to resume play in the second half. So here they come, the road team now getting the football first to start this third quarter. They're down here, but very much in this game. What, what's the tonality of a coach's talk when a game is within striking distance like this at intermission? Typically, what they're doing is emphasizing the things that went well in the first half and Seven, wanting more eight, of that. 90. Sure, you've got to go over some of the errors and clean up some things because there's a reason you're down. But overall, I think they want to stay positive, stay up with this. And all it out, and the defense has come up with it. And they came out of the locker trailing. Not a good way to start this second half with their first drive. Can't imagine that the discussion at halftime encompassed this at all. In fact, I'm sure they talked about, okay, kind of wipe the slate clean, start the second half, and let's go out and play the way we know that we can. That's not a great example of it. They didn't envision that. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. Now both of these defenses have been stifling these last few drives offensively, just not able to get anything going. So what needs to change? I think a lot of the guys will go back and review, so to speak, because everyone has someone assigned to, how did each play work? Okay, what did, what did we use that kind of worked for us during this game? Try and get back to some of those plays, as well as the possibility of showing something you haven't shown already in this game and trying to change things up. We'll see if they take the advice of Mr. Davis. Set, blue 43. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And not much there at all. Maybe a yard up to the 43. I know the scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker. And what that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. And they'll go ground game here with a tailback. And he's got the first down yardage before being taken down at midfield. Seven yards there, good enough to move the sticks. But we tend to give those running backs that are slashers a lot of credit, but how about guys who are maulers? Because that's what you want in short yardage situations. And we just saw that occur right there, didn't we? Vertical, downhill running. And he'll get this into enemy territory, but not by much as he's down to the 48. Well, they had that one sniffed out. Excellent run blitz. Stopped that one for a short gain. What makes a good run blitz a good run blitz? The ability to stay on task, to follow up your assignment, go to the gap you're supposed to cover, and not be deterred by anything else. It'll be a gain of five, but still about three yards shy of the first down marker, and now it's third down. I think we can safely say that those types of plays are the backbone of this offense. We know not every run's going to be a big hitter, but you know they'll take that type of result on each and every attempt. A good chance this is four down territory if they're unable to convert. But right now looking at a third and three. He finds Brown complete. A good pick up there, a 22. But that's what you're looking for when you're wanting to throw the ball downfield. You want one of those guys who can play out on the perimeter, can play out wide, who can not only get open, but when they're covered, can uncover themselves downfield and create catches. This quarterback now 11 of 17 passing thus far. He's got his guys a first and 10. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll take this inside the 20 and down to the 18. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Well, so many times we look at a short run and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things, but the defensive guys, hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blow. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. And on the ground they go with a running back. And he'll get this one down to about the 17. Just a one-yard pickup there, and it's going to make it third down at six. And this is why aggressive defensive coordinators love to blitz. It wreaks havoc because they end up taking their attention to the blitzers, freed up the D linemen to make the play. So they need six yards here on third down. They're two for two on third down tries so far on this drive. Back to throw. Wade. Now the pressure gets there, and he goes down just inside the 20 at the 19. 
You know, on these types of plays, we're always looking to assess blame. Okay, where did it break down? Sometimes it's just a great play. a field goal team now for the second time here today. From the left hash, it's a 36-yard attempt. And his kick is right there. It's good. And that will cut this lead back down to four now. It's 17-13. So a decent drive there to start the third quarter. They only salvaged three out of it, but they inch a bit closer. Yeah, but still lots of time to go in this one. That's why you hear that clapping on the sidelines, <laughs> right? Hey, Got some points. As you said, inching their way back in. Time left to go out and get that victory. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. They have the lead. Now they'll be looking to extend that lead. And this is where I enjoy talking about one of my favorite subjects, tendency breakers, or counters as I also like to call them. You've done things in a certain way in the first right, half, and they've had the ability to see what you've done. They're going to make their adjustments. So guess what? You adjust yourself and try and stay ahead of the pace because you are looking for some separation in this ball game. The adjustment to the adjustment. Without a doubt. <laughs> show them one thing, hit them with something else. The last play got just a yard. Here's second and nine from the 26. All right, here we go. And they'll go with a ground attack here. And he'll take this up near the 35, maybe the 34. Call it an eight-yard gain. Much better shape now on third and just a yard. They're trying to show that they can run the ball, protect this lead, give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. And this offense on third down today, they've converted three out of five thus far. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. And they'll go on the ground. And he will have a first down here at about the 40. Now whistles here, and we've got a man down. Man down on the field. Well, he gets attended to. We'll step aside. And they'll try the ground game here with the running back. And he'll be brought down just shy of the 45. And give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. Tough first half for him, unable to put up the numbers he's used to producing. But with a guy like him, you and I both know it just takes a couple of explosive touches for him to make an impact on this game and on the stat sheet as well. Here we go now. Back to throw. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. Holding offense. That hold coming from the left side of the line. Hands got caught in the cookie jar on that one, and the flag came right, out. Penalty against him. They'll set up a throw. And he will find his man on the outside. Give him 14 on the play, and that's going to bring up a third down. Fight his way forward to about the 48-yard line. Just a yard on the run there, and that's going to bring us to a fourth down. In the first half, he was held in check on the ground, but despite that lack of production, they still have the lead. Yeah, and they've got to feel fortunate about that. If they could actually get production from their lead horse, that would help open up this offense and widen this margin, too. 
So they bring out their punter as he'll punt it away for the second time. Now this is going to carry well into the end zone for a touchback. And now back out comes the offense. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them want to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it. Way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that. They weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive to end with a kick, <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. Some runs are blocked so well, you almost forget that someone has to carry the ball to gain the yardage. The leverage by the offensive line to create space up front, really well done. Up at the 29 now, they'll head to the line, second and a yard. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And it's a fumble! So they escape, so to speak, maintaining the football. Defensively, though, opportunity miss. It definitely was because that's all defenses talk about, getting the football and either advancing it the other way or just getting possession and turning it over to their offense. That can be a little bit deflating. You're exactly right, a lost opportunity. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. And they'll go ground game here with a tailback. And he'll be brought down just shy of the 45. And a solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. So much of the game today, we're looking for hybrid players, guys who can do a combination of jobs. And anyone who plays a strong safety position now more than ever is a hybrid type player. Half defensive back that covers passes and half linebacker that makes tackles. We just saw the linebacker make that play. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. A nice pick up there, 10 yards, and it'll move the sticks. Well, that was a pretty favorable situation there. What would you call that, second and manageable? Smart play, too. Didn't force it downfield when he didn't have it. Just checked it down, let him get the first down, and that's exactly what he did. Couple of first downs to kick off the drive. Here's first and 10 up at the 46. So the false start will back them up five. False start, offense. Yeah, that'll be accepted, of course, and that moves him back five. The false start backs him up five, first and 15. And now whistles and a flag, and I think we got a jump here. Encroachment, defense. A free five yards as the defense jumps. I know it's an anticipation game down. for them, but it's also a reaction game, and they reacted poorly on that one. After the penalty, a fresh set of downs. It's first and ten. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And able to push his way forward here for a good little gain. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. Now, they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse, and I believe he'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. Set, and on the ground they go with the running back. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. No gain on the play there, so they're left with a third down and six. But that didn't appear to be a run blitz. He just started in once he saw the run develop. That appeared to be a case of see ball, get ball. On third down, Wade. He's got the connection left side to Brown. And he got blown up. Losing yardage on the play back at the 44. Call it a loss of two on the play. And it'll be fourth down. And they bring their punter out there now. He's been terrific so far. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. 
So out now comes the offense back onto the field. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do right, it go. without letting panic creep in and affect their play. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. 23 yards on the play. So they're on that play. Offensively, they were in the crossing route. Defense was in zone coverage. So as a former DB, how tough is it to defend that? It's really difficult because your natural inclination is to chase the receiver and maybe leave your zone. So you have to have discipline in order to Talk to your other coverage guys and let them know that that receiver is crossing from your zone to the next right, zone. He's coming your three, way. Make three. sure you have him. And then when the ball is actually thrown, secure the tackle. When they're moving on crossing routes, if you miss a tackle, it usually results in a big play. Give him 30 yards there. As we continue to advance in the NFL, as people continue to scout players, they really don't care as much about body types as they care about those guys who can make people miss, run through tackles, and gain all that additional run after catch. Anybody who has that ability, they want them on their team. So now then, the big play has them all the way inside the 30 now, first and 10. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in the Rose City of Portland, Oregon. As it looks like we are just about set and ready to begin with the fourth. Now let's go! Green, 39! Back to throw now on first down. And he's going to drop this off to his fullback. No gain, and it's second down. Had the completed pass, but for no gain, stopped right at the line, so it's second and 10. Set! Green, 39! They'll look to throw again. And he's got his man on the comebacker. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. 12 yards there as they keep this drive rolling. It's another first down. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it. So it's not that big of a deal to me. I'm going to keep firing. Give him nine there on the first down completion. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there? Freezing the defense just enough. And he will take this one in for a touchdown. A great play there. His second touchdown on the season. And his guys find a way to stretch that lead. Getting your back involved, what's the importance there in the passing game? Well, oftentimes you can create mismatches because who's going to cover him? And you get him into space, which is where he likes to operate with the ball in his hands. Well, oftentimes makes people miss, gets that run after the catch, and off he goes. And into the end zone. Now the try here for the point after. Extra point splits the uprights, and that pushes the lead up to 11. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. Fielded about a yard deep. And this return nets positive as he gets past the 25 and up to the 27-yard line. Now this offense about ready to take over again. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. Well, you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. Johnson with a completion over the middle. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. They may want to go back to that one. First play of the drive, good for 15 and a first down. 
Decent start to the drive there. Of course, they need the touchdown, two-point conversion, and a field goal. Yeah, those guys are into it. How about the guys on the sidelines? You see the coaches signaling, all the personnel groups up on the sideline, ready to go in and out of the game. They've got to condense their time now in order to try and get back into it. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. Set, wait, 32. To throw on second down, Wade. And incomplete there, a nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. Anytime a defense can sit back in a zone like that, it tends to create a lot of congestion in the middle of the field. Makes it very hard to slot one in. Looked like I-4 at rush hour in your hometown of Orlando, Florida. An absolute mess. To throw on third down, Wayne. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. And he's got the first down before being taken down at the 46. And in a two-score game, obviously, every play, every third down, like we saw there, magnified big pickup. It was a huge pickup. What they really want, though, is to not even get to third down. They've got to maximize time and conserve as much as possible. This quarterback now perfect since the second half started. Seven of seven. It's first and ten. Set blue 43. From the gun, Wayne got his man complete over the middle. That's Johnson. And this time he's able to take it down to the 42. That throw good for four. It's second down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. Set, blue, 80. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. And partner, I think that was a great example that not all tight ends are created equal. Because everything was right. Got the completion, but he's not one of the more dynamic guys in the league. So even though he caught it, couldn't turn it into much more. Only a yard on the pickup there, and it's going to leave him with a fourth down. This late in the game, Charles, I think you maybe seriously have to think about going for it. Especially where they are in terms of field position, because this is almost like no man's land. Might hurt your punter because there might not be enough space, maybe too far for your field goal kicker. I, I'm like the old rule. Possession is nine-tenths of the law. Possession is nine-tenths of winning the game. Go for it. Get the first down. Close it out. All right, so they needed two scores to get back in the game. The field goal there, maybe not exactly what they wanted, but the necessary first step. And there's still time remaining, and there's enough time to get it done. They've got to get at the least a three and out here to get the ball back, preferably a takeaway. This fielded a few yards into the end zone, and no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And here now the offense heading back out there. The field goal we just saw has this now at a one-score game. And on this side of the football, things are getting pretty tenuous, a little stressful. Blood pressure up a little bit, you think? I think up a lot of it. Uh, could you imagine taking the <laughs> pulse right now? It might be like a jackhammer out there on that side of the ball. But here's what the deal is. I think what we've observed is a team that's been playing not to lose as opposed to playing to win. And they've got to get back to that. And that means opening things up again, being a little more free in what they're trying to get done on offense. Let's face it, you can run the route tree as many times as you want, get in sync, practice it, do all those things. But once you get to game speed, it doesn't always time up quite that well. That one goes incomplete. Line of scrimmage, again the 25, second and 10. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. Two yards on the carry there, and it's going to lead him to third down. All right, that's a decent game there, but it hasn't been his best game overall. So I wonder what the mindset is of his team. Do they want him to handle the football and try and close this game now? Or are they going to make an alternative plan and maybe go in a different direction? I think they need him, and this is his time to shine. And a nice gain of 21 yards. Well, probably the only thing he did wrong there was go out of bounds, nursing this fourth quarter lead. 
You want to stay in, eat the clock. Yeah, you got to love the effort, the catch, the extra yardage, but you got to know the situation. Stay in bounds, young man. And they'll go with the ground attack here. And the second wave of tacklers is going to get him as they stop him behind the line. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. Run blitz there defensively, something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter. I think we'll see a lot of it. And, and the difference between that and a pass blitz, pass blitz, you're just trying to get to the quarterback. You're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB and make sure he gets on the ground. In a run blitz, you're actually trying to cover up gaps, trying to cover up holes so they can't run the football. Now I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. On play action, they'll throw. And his throw is incomplete. Big play coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. And it is true. You can draft the fastest. You can draft the most athletic guys. But if they don't know the art of positioning, sometimes it's all for naught. In this case, in the right spot, help force the incompletion. Well, it had his hands on it for a second. Would have been a tough catch, though. Falls incomplete. A really nice gain of 25 yards. So they did not bring pressure, and turns out probably a bad idea. Yeah, he had time to stand in the pocket and deliver a strike. So I'm wondering if they're going to note that, and next time just go ahead and bring that pressure. Set, blue, land it. And they'll go on the ground. Able to fight for about four yards there to the 13. Well, with the fumble he had earlier, we, we know how key keeping the football is here. That fumble earlier probably at the forefront of his mind. Just hold on to this thing. It's also at the forefront of the mind of the guys who are trying to get the ball from him. And since they've seen him drop it on the ground before, they're doing everything possible to have him do it again. They need that turnover. Now they try the right side here. And he'll get this one down to about the 10-yard line. Three yards on the pickup. That's going to set up an interesting third and about four to go. This offense so far on third down, six conversions and nine tries. They've done a great job of picking these up. This is third and four. Now back to throw. His pass caught at the four. And he won't have the touchdown, but he will have the first down as he's tackled at the two. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. He's been the go-to guy. They needed a big play there on third down. Went his way. It worked out. Doesn't matter whether they've scouted it or that they think he's going to get the ball. He has a knack for finding his way open and completing the connection. So first and goal, six points here would go a long way toward wrapping this one up. They'll give it to him right up the gun. And that play going absolutely nowhere as he's belted before he could get out of the backfield. This is where coaches have to have spent a lot of time going over situations with their players because him getting tackled there is not the worst thing in the world. You're going to run more plays, right? Clock's going to go. But his thought process is getting into the end zone. It's counterintuitive for him to actually go down in this spot. Yeah, but you, like you say, you don't want to get in the end zone too early here. No, not at all, because you may leave an opening that could come back and get you. They get it to him running left. And not a whole lot there. He does get a couple, taking it from the five down to the three. Now the objective there, I mean, yes, the positive gain, that's nice, but work some clock. Yeah, you're exactly right, but the problem for them is still within a possession, so they can't just sit on it running the ball. They'll have to find a way to throw it effectively as well. Time for a break. We'll come back, see what transpires after this. So it's our home team here in possession of the football as we come back. They've got it third and goal now as they look for that final touchdown to salt this one away. Now this is a big third down, and you'd have to think we'd see a timeout right away if they can't stop him here. 
And they'll try the ground game here with the running back. And he will fight his way into the end zone for a touchdown. A great effort there. His first touchdown here of the new campaign. And his guys are going to add on to their lead. Well, that was absolutely ideal for them, wasn't it? Trying to salt this game away. I think one of my kids just graduated in about a time they had the football. That was absolutely impressive. Everybody wants those salt away the game drives. What makes them successful? Well, when you're able to mix run pass, when you're able to control the football and stay ahead of the chains, I'm using every cliche I know, <laughs> but that's how you get it done because you're not taking negative plays, and that way you're able to run what you want to run when you get a chance to call it. Extra point right down the middle, and the lead is up to 15 now. That one was an extended drive, 14 plays all told, and it ends with a three-yard scoring run. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This will be taken in at the one. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. Now this offensive unit ready to see what they can do here. And fortunate to get points on the board last time. They had to hit a really long field goal to do so. The kickers in today's game are so good and so skilled and hit from distances that we almost start to take them for granted. Mm -hmm. And we can't do that. That's a long field goal that they got three points out of. They've got to feel good about that. And they've got to make sure they love him up because he's helped them out. Yeah, now we'll see if that offense can put six on the board here. We'll see. Now a nice play defensively on first down as this is knocked away and incomplete. Now he'll look to throw here on second and ten. And he comes back with one complete. 12 yards there as they keep this drive rolling. It's another first down. They go play action here on first down. And he finds a man on the crossing route. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. A gain of 32 that time. First down now, but that clock rolling. On first down, Wade. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. Those passes out that far wide always make you hold your breath a little bit. Felt like it was in the air for a while. What it does is it allows a defender to gain some ground, come from a long distance, and have a chance to affect the pass. Once again, they'll come up on the 26-yard line, second and 10. Set, three, 80. Throwing again on second and 10, Wade. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. And he went nowhere. He'll lose yardage back to the 29. It's a loss of four. Now third down. Throwing on third and long, Wayne. And this is going to be incomplete. Before the game, they were running the route tree about as efficiently and effectively as we could have possibly imagined. But sometimes the passes just go awry. Yeah, let's face it. When you're running the route tree in pregame, you don't have defenders breathing down your neck. You don't have defensive backs making plays on the football. Hard to replicate the intensity of the game in pregame. Looking to throw. Wayne, that is caught right at the 10-yard line. And he gets into the end zone for the touchdown. In for the score. And his guys are able to cut into that deficit. Okay, so they got the score. Do you go for one here and save the possible two-point conversion for later? I think you do because if you go for two here and you don't get it, that's deflation. Yeah. Now you wonder why you're even going for it. Take the easy one now and come back and try and get it later. And now in a nine-point game, they'll still just need to go for one here. Point after, right down the middle, as this gets them back within a touchdown and a two-point conversion. And this is going to be recovered by the hand team. And that should just about put a camper on this one.
Well, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of an anecdotal type of a number, kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% <laughs> of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. So they come up on second down, and they can get another run like we just saw. Would we'll likely put an end to this thing. Hey, hey, hey. You got three. Here we go now. Boom, yeah. And they'll run it here. And he'll be brought down at the 27-yard line. Now a second timeout called for by the defense as the clock will stop with 33 seconds remaining. Victory very much in sight now as they'll take a knee. Now the defense will burn their third and final timeout as they'll stop it with a little over 30 ticks to go in the football game. Down to a knee one more time, and that should just about do it. A lot of scoring. There's no doubt about that in this one, Charles. Points, they were not at a premium. They were pretty easy to come by. <laughs> they were, but it was fun, wasn't it? Because both teams finding ways to click. And you know people who love this game, they also love baseball games that are 14 to 11 with three or four home runs mixed in. So for the home team here, they get back in the win column as they move to two and one now on the year. And they will hit the road next week. Meanwhile, for Austin, they'll fall to one and two, and they'll get a chance to redeem themselves at home next week. And for Charles Davis and our entire crew, I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports.